This week's episode is sponsored by Patreon supporter Jeff Arbuckle, who requested the basics on his favorite character, Autobot Communications Officer Blaster. The toy that would become Blaster was originally released in 1984 as part of the Japanese toy line Microchange. It transformed into a boombox and was known as the Radio Cassette Robo, short for Radio Cassette. The Microchange figure was a working radio, but this feature was removed when the toy was imported by Hasbro to become part of the second year of the Transformers toy line in 1985. With the removal of these electronics, the toy's chest compartment could now hold cassette transformers, just like Blaster's Decepticon counterpart Soundwave, but it would be 1986 before any Autobot cassette toys were released for Blaster to interact with. The profile written for Blaster by Marvel Comics writer Bob Budiansky characterized him as a bot who liked to do everything in life loudly. With his powerful built-in radio transmitting and receiving abilities and his electronic disrupting electro scrambler gun, he was a dedicated Autobot, but his true passion and his greatest weakness was rock and roll. This personality was on prominent display in the Transformers animated series, into which Blaster was introduced partway through the second season, albeit with no explanation for where he had come from. A hip and happening guy who often tested his fellow Autobots patience with both the volume of his music and his willingness to share it with them, Blaster's voice was performed by actor Buster Jones in the style of a radio DJ a rhythmic patter full of raps and rhymes. Get down and truly hop to town, yeah! You're gonna shake and roll with a touch of soul! Blaster's spotlight adventures in the series included being captured by the Decepticons so that they could use his broadcasting abilities to hold the Earth's airwaves to ransom, and working with tracks to stop the Decepticons from enslaving New Yorkers with hypnotic rock music. It was during the latter adventure that Blaster clashed with Soundwave for the first time, triumphing over the villain in a sonic duel. The continued availability of Blaster's toy in 1986 earned him a memorable appearance in the Transformers the Movie, unleashing his new cassette troops Steeljaw, Ramhorn, Eject and Rewind to fight off Soundwaves. Early drafts of the movie gave him a subplot in which he led a guerrilla team of Autobots on Earth in the latter half of the film, but the idea was dropped during production. Blaster and his cassettes continued to appear regularly in the cartoon's subsequent third season, with Blaster now occupying a new position of authority as the commander of Autobot City on Earth. In another showcase episode, he once more faced off against Soundwave over the sonic weaponry of the musical planet Eurythma. Blaster is one of the most famous examples of a Transformer who was characterized very differently between the cartoon and the Marvel comic, which depicted him not as a cool upbeat dude, but a grim, rebellious loner and a vicious fighter without mercy. The comic even interpreted the design of his toy differently from the cartoon, and gave him a different head design with a visor. Introduced as a member of an underground Autobot resistance cell on Cybertron, Blaster was driven by the death of his friend Scrounge to attempt to stop the Decepticon's new space bridge construction project. He wound up being teleported to Earth by the bridge, and joined up with the Autobots there, but soon found himself butting heads with their tyrannical leader, Grimlock. This led to a run of stories that saw Blaster essentially become the comic's main character, as he and Goldbug deserted Grimlock's command and struck out on their own adventures, contending with threats like the metal-eating Scraplets. Blaster would eventually settle his beef with Grimlock in a one-on-one -on -one duel, but the discontinuation of his toy in 1987 would see him killed off soon after just one of the many victims taken offline in a massacre carried out by a cosmically empowered Starscream. In Japan, however, they weren't quite ready to say goodbye to Blaster just yet. For the 1987 toy line in the Japanese market, Blaster's toy was recolored, retooled to be able to hold two cassettes instead of just one, and re-released under the new name Twincast. 
The story of this upgrade was told in the Japanese exclusive animated series The Headmasters, in which Blaster perished in a final face-off with Soundwave, only for Autobot Headmaster leader Fortress Maximus to use the advanced technology of the planet Master to bring him back to life as Twincast. Twincast was a regular supporting character throughout the series, which repositioned him as an even more direct opposite to Soundwave by recasting him in the role of the Autobot's intelligence officer, who used his cassettes to spy on the Decepticons just like Soundwave famously did. In 1990, a new non-transforming Action Master figure of Blaster was released. This precipitated his return to life in the pages of the comic but he lost his grim characterization in the process. In the United Kingdom's version of the comic, the more jovial Action Master Blaster served as host of the comic's letters page for its final year. Depictions of Blaster in the 21st century have often tried to combine his different designs and characterizations from the cartoon and comic into one. But such stories are few and far between, since, sad to say, poor old Blaster really hasn't received much attention in modern media. What few notable appearances he's had have generally been limited to comic books, most prominently those from IDW Publishing, in which Blaster was a former anti-establishment pirate radio host turned wartime Autobot propaganda broadcaster whose inspiring speeches were key to the war effort. On air, he affected an upbeat cartoon-inspired persona, but off the air, he was much more comparable to the serious figure of the Marvel comic. In his introductory Spotlight one-shot, Blaster was targeted for assassination by Soundwave, and he vowed revenge against the Decepticon. But unfortunately, this plot thread would never be resolved, as Blaster served as little more than a background character for the next decade of IDW stories. But a lack of presence in media hasn't kept Blaster off toy store shelves. His original toy has been re-released numerous times, in its original colours, as twin cast, and even as an evil version of the character from the mirror universe of Shattered Glass, who has a German accent and loves classical music. Like Soundwave, the dated nature of Blaster's alternate mode has also seen several efforts to modernise him for new toy lines. He's been given a variety of vehicle modes, and once, in the device label toy line, he was even a laptop computer. Most recently though, the 2016 Titans Return toy line went full retro with a new Blaster toy that transformed into both a boombox and a bass mode the head of which was formed by the small Titan Master robot named Twincast. While he may not have had the biggest role to play in the decade since Generation 1, Blaster's prominent showings in both the original cartoon and comic, however different they were, plus his rivalry with an iconic character like Soundwave, and the long-standing popularity of the classic cassette gimmick that they both share, have ensured him a well-remembered place in Transformers history that likely means Blaster will be blasting at us for years to come. And those are the basics on Blaster. Thanks to Jeff for sponsoring this episode. Which characterization do you prefer? Let's hear it in the comments. Subscribe to The Basics for more Transformers lore if you're not already, and check out Patreon to support the series and for the chance to sponsor an episode of your own.